Hello, hello. This is Johannes Wateri from Hold to Run. Today we'll be looking at web sockets and push notifications. And we'll be implementing a web socket in the client as in here. So we can receive push notification and we can send messages into our backend. Uh, and in the client side, we'll be using Kotlin, Android Kotlin coding, and we will recap the socket implementation. And the cool part in here is that we won't be using any middleman post notification service providers such as Google, FCM, Fly Fire Cloud messaging or similar, but uh, we'll rely on our service running on the client which renews the socket connection whenever it requires so that our back end in in the cloud in the ktor environment is able to send messages into all of our clients when required so let's take a look at the demo quickly so in here, we connect into our server. The socket responds that, hey, you're Joshua 15 and you there's total three connections. So the simulator is the third one. I currently have my two other phones, actual phones, which can now message to each shutter or the back end can notify critical messages anytime, even if we're not currently making any REST API queries as such in here into the backend. So we're not pulling testing cyclically in into our backend. So let's take a look. We'll send a message into this into this server from actual device, I have my phone in here and uh, it's just gonna be a hello from actual device here. Let me send it now. And we received the message. I don't know if you heard it, but it was received by this simulator. Hello from actual device. Okay. Before we go any further into the recap of the code, let's take a look what I do. So you can go directly into holdrun.com and in here you can see the applications that I have released and I'm currently actively developing the server doc. Take a look at the short demo if you like or go directly into Google Play and you can try it yourself. Okay, let's start. Okay, so now we have end endless running service and we have our socket which is connected. So what is happening in the code and how do we create the socket and what libraries do we use? So I use OKHTTP3 okay, for the web socket. So this is my implementation library. So in our endless service, we have a socket ready to be specifically web socket ready to be created if it doesn't yet exist. And uh, when the service is running, we have endless loop in here as a coroutine thread and it's constantly checking if the socket needs to be created or if the user wants it to be stopped. So there's just a cross-checking if the socket is not yet existing but the user has requested it to be started. When he clicked in here he requested it to be started. We're just gonna recreate that socket again. So with the item in here you see this is just for me getting 
persistent data from iPrev's data store, which holds the URLs, the end URL, base URL, end URL, and the user parameters. So you gotta figure out how you pass these in. I'm using Prev's data store to save them as an object item class, so I can easily just move them as a package. But now let's go into my web socket provider. This is going to be all about OKHTTP. So the first thing I passed in my parameter class, which pretty much holds information that I see necessary. Authorization, uh, whether it, the user wanted to be in a heaters, query parameters, of course, the URL addresses into the back end and uh, some custom message that the user wants to send for other clients through his server. Okay, so let's go back into this socket pro API provider. First, we create request. The URL, of course, with VSS is for WebSocket and uh, VS. This is like the, uh, the parallel of HTTP and VSS is the secure HTTPS. So WebSocket won't work with HTTP, so you have to use VSS URLs as in here. Okay, now we have our request. Now we will create the HTTP client. With the HTTP client builder, we set the timeouts. I don't want any call timeout because I want it to be stay open as long as it can be. If it gets destroyed anyways, I'm just gonna Every check every second in the loop if it needs to be reconnected, recreated. We add follow redirects and then we have to add interceptors and pass in the chain because in here we'll be feeding in the authorization data either into the heaters or into the parameters. Now the user is requesting them to be in the heaters. So my parameter item is passed in and the chain is passed in. Here we start new request with the chain request new builder and apply. Inside the apply it was supposed to be in the heaters. I check if you want it in the heaters and then we can, within the apply, we can just add the header that key and value in the request. Okay, now we have the request and any other parameters that's supposed to be existing. We have the original HTTP URL. We get it from the chain request and URL. And uh, if it's supposed to go in the parameters, like so, we can then add it to also through new URL, original HTTP URL, new headers, and through apply, and then we can add it also into the parameters with add query parameters, like so. Okay, but this time it wasn't in the parameters, so we're just gonna finish with request URL, new URL, that's gonna be empty, and finish with chain proceed and pass in the requests. And here it is, we get the response as a return function. Now our OKHTTP OK is nearly done. We have authorization data and we have the basic communication client settings and we can check how we're building the listener. So the listener is obviously coming also from our service class. So let's jump back. That's something we need to add into the create HTTP client before we can return the WebSocket. So the socket listener is a inner class in my service down here. So this is critical. This is pretty much the listener which tells the lifecycle state of the socket. So this has to be passed in within the socket and uh, 
it tells us whether the socket has been disconnected, died, or if there's failure, close, closing. This also handles all the messages that we can receive from the uh, server and it tells us whether it's open or not. So let's see. When we connect, we can now disconnect. We can say stop and connect. Okay, we connected. What what I do in here nearly, I just update live status within my singleton. This is mutable state to tell the value for the UI Jetpack Compose that, hey, change the icons, it's connected. Pretty simple. When we get a message, we get the message from the server, we can create push notification. And that's exactly what we're doing. Whenever our server has been coded to send a message to us, we get the text from the message, pass it in into our notification, and we notify the device. Like so. Let's let's get a message from our actual device. It's gonna be hello from actual device. Okay, there it is. That's what this did. We could also receive byte string message, though I'm not currently handling this as it should be. It, this is still not finished in as an implementation, so we're just informing that, hey, you received byte string of size, and that's it. And notify the user anyhow. When the WebSocket is closing for any reason, we will just call end socket, pass in the socket and a reason. The same with the on closed, we're just gonna end the socket. And on failure, we will end the socket also. So I just created one end socket function in here. So the server is telling us that this specific socket is closed or closing or failed so I'll close the instance of my socket and the socket just to be sure that came from the uh, lifecycle observer listener if it fails I'll use brute force with cancel and we dis let the UI know that it has been disconnected and we null the socket because when we null the socket we start the cycle again in here where we had to refresh the socket or stop the socket we have the infinite loop in here every second we check if it has failed closed and nulled Yes, we closed it and nulled it, but the user still hasn't changed the started status. So we're gonna recreate the socket and it's gonna be reconnecting and ready to be receiving, sending messages again with the back end. Wow, so that's how we create a persistent socket connection that's gonna keep itself going as long as the user doesn't stop it in here or totally by killing this service in here. Okay, now we can dive into the back end and see how Kator handles the socket connection and sending messages to clients. Okay, now we are in the back end, the heart of the server that can share information to all clients connected in into this point. So this is an actual server. So we have the same endpoint in here and I want to have the ID so I can identify the clients. There can be many clients. This is not just for a single socket client connection, but it handles multiple devices and shares information between them. Of course, before I do anything, I always check the uh, authorization to keep 
unwanted guests out of my backend. Now, when for the first time the user is connecting into this point, we'll create a new connection. For this, I have created my client manager. From that, I want to request new connection for this ses session with the ID that he is informing that he wants to use. Let's dive in here. So in here, we create a new connection item. The connection class is in here. So we get pass in the session of the WebSocket and the ID of the user. In here, we have the ID and the session. This is directly from the KTOR example. We're just going to be adding a incrementing number onto the user ID because the ID can be same. So this way we are avoid cross conflicts and return. Uh, sorry, create it with the name as so. OK, now we have a connection item. So because I call this clean and create connection because at the same time when I create a new connection, I'm just double checking if I if I need to remove any died connections. So this is just purely trying to keep it clean and not to just bundle up endlessly new connections. So this is me checking if if the uh, connections that we have in here as mutable set connection, collection synchronized set. If any of the connections are inactive, they're not active anymore. If that's true, I try to close them and I add it to delete list. And then we just remove them because those are unnecessary. I don't want to bundle up endless new connections every time. Okay then we always return despite if this cleanup function fails we return the new connection like so and now we have new connection within the same client manager i'll just add this new connection so that was the uh, mutable set connection list that way we can come back to this connection always And that's about it. Now we're going to be checking, sending response. This is just a response that, hey, you connected or I have some additional information for you to be shared. So in here, this is the standard message. If I don't have any custom messages stacked up within my client manager, then I'll just send, hey, you connected successfully with this ID and there's as many client connections currently. So pretty much I respond that the connection is success. As so when we are in the client, we stop, we connect the back and checked. Did we have any stacked up messages, custom messages? No, let's just inform the standard you're connected. Good. Now this happens always within the new connection. So what happens in the back end when another client sends a message that is already connected to this WebSocket? It is here. Within Gator, I found this for loop that can handle the incoming messages as this acts as a echo and group socket, we're just going a for loop frame in incoming. If we're success, we get the received text from the read text and we inform the connection name and the message he sent to all of the connections in in here. So in my client manager, we have custom function send all message to all. 
So we create a new class. You can just pass in a text if you like. I just create message class because might need to save it in a database for instance. Okay, let's go in here. Send message to all. What is happening in here? We get the message as a message class just passed in a string text. I give it a custom ID if it needs to be saved in a database. In here we repeat the same thing. All connections of course that we have currently in the system in immutable set. We go them through in a for loop. We try catch if because it might be dead it's just gonna catch an exception but if it's okay we send it to all clients so this happens every time one of the clients sends a message to back end so that's how i repeat repeat response to all of the clients let's see i'm just gonna use my actual device again and press send okay and here it is hello from actual device like so that's what happened in the back end so don't be misconfused i always just repeat if i should delete any dead connections that's why i always keep this delete us because if this fails during the send it means the client wasn't accessible anymore it's disconnected so i'll just add that try to close it and add it to my delete list and send it to my delete function and get rid of it that why that's that's how i keep my connections list clean so pretty much i incrementally do that clean up every time when I do any active send receive uh, uh, functions with these connections. So one more thing I want to show you is how to utilize this in other way than just passing messages from the clients. Now you can do some hook hooking hookup functions, check functions in the server side and decide if you want to send something. Let's say you know internal errors or you have any messages that you want to share to your clients proactively. Let's jump into that now. You can use that WebSocket for proactive messaging within your backend instead of it just being reactive when it gets something from the clients now the client has started the connection and the service is running you may have multiple clients now especially with the server dog application it, it just started now some time ago i made a video of rate limiting and i had a aha idea it would be really nice if the uh, back end could inform that hey this is rate limited and inform to all clients with a push notification type instead of me pulling cyclic tests into my back end so now we have our rate limited rate limiting in here and uh, that's what i did with the websocket so this i call proactive messaging from the back end we have our rate limiting function in here and this pretty much tells us that um, you when it is rate limiting here I added just a tiny piece of code into this uh, rate limiting class which can now decide if it needs to send all the clients an informational message through the WebSocket. 
So when it knows it has the limit, I just create my data class for the message. This is just my data class. You can again do how you see it needs to be done to pass the data. And I tell that, hey, that root, whatever end point root it is, or make a custom name is rate limited. That's useful. Somebody might be attacking my backend and I'm not even actively testing it with my application. But now as the socket connection exists, all of my client devices will get the information that something has been rate limited. So in my client manager, we just add this message. So messages it's just in my list of messages that I can pass to my devices. And then with the client manager, we send to all. So in here, we have all the active connections from the WebSocket. Like I showed you, we have a mutable set of connections. And with the send all, from the rate limiting class, we get an access into our WebSocket clients and we send to all. So let's take a look. Let's, let's make an attack into our backend. Now this simulator presents my phone in a pocket. I'm happily in. Hawaii or whatever. So let's kill it. The screen could be off or anyhow. And now I'm just going to overload the back end. This is an whatever attack you want to call it. It should work. It takes a little time. I'm just tapping this device endlessly. Let's see. Any time, any second. Okay. Here it came. My back end proactively now shared the information that hey, your test rest API responses is rate limited. Pretty cool. So now you can decide whatever you want to do, what kind of uh, hooks you want to implement into your back end for proactive messaging. Or you can use the ServerDoc application as a safeguard to uh, get information from your backend, either by polling through REST API or with, through the WebSocket connection. So that's all I wanted to share today. And if you like what I do, you can go directly into Google Play and test the ServerDoc application or check any other applications in my homepage at holtoran.com. We'll be back.